I'm going to show you a, a pretty common use case and maybe some e errors or issues you may encounter if you're doing this. In this case, I'm going to uh, create an asset. In this case, it is a Unix system. I just call it bad Unix because it will fail. It starts to fail, so I have to select the box. Try again. Okay, here it is, bad Unix. That is my, my name, just for my asset. And I just have this uh, filled in earlier, so it is an Ubuntu system and with a proper network address. That's the thing you have to insert into that field that, to make it work. And I'm gonna click on this connection button. And I'm now gonna use a service account name that is called, in my case, administrator. Most people will fall back to the root account as the service account name by default because it is always there and it is able to execute each and any, uh, any action. But from a security point of view, that may not be applicable to your environment. Maybe you want to limit down the permissions to the absolute minimum because of that uh, service account. So it is only used to change the password information. That is the basic working principle of safeguard, as you already know. So. In my case, I just use an administrator. I have created that account earlier and I have entered the service account password and I'm now going to click on the test connection button. Now safeguards try to connect to that asset and tries to see if it can work with that uh, service account. In my example, of course, it's failed and it gives you that little pop-up box over there with some kind of message it is just failure. And if you want to have some details on this, just click on this little eye icon here, and you're gonna see a more descriptive message what has happened and why it has failed. In this case, it reads insufficient privileges to access the password information. And if you even want to more have more information on this, here's the show more button. Click on that. That is the task output that we have just seen before. And you can see about the operation that this is the stuff safeguard executes and tries to connect and whatever it, 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 it's, it is doing here to complete that task. You can scroll down a little bit if you want and to see what all these things happen in here. And a very nice thing to look into as well is the SSH communication because safeguard tries to connect to that asset via SSH because it's the Unix stuff and it tries to execute something. And what it's trying to do is here you're going to see it is trying to look into the password file via some commands like egrep or grep and uh, in this case it's looking in the etc shadow file and here's the error message that caused the abortion of the command permission denied so it is has no permission to look into that file because the etc shadow file on unix is a protected file how to solve this the easiest way most people do is use the root account, as I said, but we don't want to use the root account. We want to use our administrator account. So the administrator account needs to be given permission to look into that file. And we're going to use Zulu for this. So in this case, we have to enter our privilege evaluation command Zulu. And now Safeguard will use Zulu to perform an action with the administrator account. But to define what this administrator account on the Unix box is allowed to do with Zulu, you have to configure something on the Unix box as well. So to edit the Zulu permissions, we're going to use the vi Zulu command. And I'm not allowed to use vi Zulu as a standard user, so I have to use the Zulu command in our example to get permission to run the vi Zulu. Looks a little bit funny, but that's the real, that's the real case. So I have to do sudo vi sudo, and now I have to enter my password because this this account is always a system administrator for the system. Otherwise, you have to use root to do this. Okay, now I got this nice little interface, and there are a couple of lines here I have to modify. And one of the things here is that you're going to see that there are a couple of definitions already in. So in this case, you see that members of the group admin can execute stuff with root privileges, that the members of the sudo stuff, sudo group can execute commands and so on. I'm going to insert some kind of definition just for my administrator account. In this case, I would say the account it is administrator and it should be allowed to do 
age and everything, that is the all with the root permission for any command. So that's a pretty straightforward definition. You can limit that maybe for instance just to uh, be valid for the grab and egrep command that is really required here. But to be much more easier and much more flexible, I just want to want to use this definition. But of course, check with your security people. They're going to assist you what is the required command to be inserted here. So in this case, I'm going to exit this one now. And now I should be able to do this. So let's try again. Go back to our safeguard. Go back to the connection here and go back to test connection. Don't, don't forget to include sudo here and now go to test connection. And now it works. Now we can use the administrator as the service account to manage other accounts on our newly created asset bad Unix. Easy. The, the usual thing you have to, have to do is just to know what to do. And there are a couple of things that may assist you in finding out what's the real root cause of that error and how to circumvent this. And the first source you, you should point your interest to is the documentation. So in this case, there is the safeguard administration guide. And there are a couple of things inside that you should have already read. Or if, if you're encountering errors, there's always worth to take a look inside here because there's a whole section on troubleshooting. 300, 400 pages away. And it talks about lots of other errors and things and issues you may encounter and ways to resolve them. On the other hand, specific to the use case we have done before about these uh, Unix system, there is some kind of uh, chapter in that documentation as well that talks about preparing systems for management. If you click on that, it talks about Unix based system. And if you switch to that paragraph here, you're going to see what you should have been done before trying to define that asset in safeguard. This is the pre-required task that you have to do to prepare that Unix system to be ready to be managed by safeguard. And here it talks about the usual stuff. So create the service account as the first step and then ensure that the service account has access to that files or has access to the commands it needs to execute. And here you see that little line on the file that should be modified in the sudo as file, as we have already done using our vi sudo command. And if you browse further, you're going to see all the other things like Windows systems and all the list of supported system here handled in detail. So you can find specific information on the supported system, what to configure, where and how to do this. If all fails or have done this and you want to have more information on this, there is always the support side of one identity on, uh, on the safeguard product. There's lots of lots of useful information here. Of course, you see all these nice video tutorials you may have seen earlier. And there's a little area over there to the right. This is called knowledge articles. We have a knowledge base section in that support side. And there are lots of useful uh, articles written by users or by the support team that deal with specific information. For instance, what ports you have to open to get communication and so on and so on. And we're going to talk about discovered issues or and ways to resolve them. So before talking to the safeguard support team or sending in a support bundle, maybe you have a look on the support page here and browse through the knowledge base articles. You can search them, of course, you, so that you may ensure that the issue may have already been discovered and there's a resolution for this available. And of course, all the documentation and the software is available for download for your reference as well. And if you like to have more information available or if you would like to get in touch with other users, there's always the possibility to go to the community sites for one identity and uh, just place your question there. So you may get an answer from the support team or by other users to help you in solving your issue.